All right, I will call this uh, meeting for Senate County Commissioners to order for uh, Thursday, September 2nd. Are we second already? Mm -hmm. Well, please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, 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 States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner Paradiso, do you have us today on prayer? Sure. All right. Dear God, thank you for today, bringing us all together for county business. Uh, we're blessed to have a great uh, year with our crops, farmers. Um, we have uh, special prayer to uh, our military, all those uh, in Afghanistan, uh, pray for their safety. And uh, we ask you to look over our meeting. Amen. 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 We appreciate nobody looking at their watch during that. That was good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, roll call, please. Wow. Commissioner Kirshner. Here. Commissioner Paradiso. Here. Commissioner Shuck. Here. Okay. I will accept a motion for the uh, minutes of the last meeting held last Thursday, August 26th. So moved. Thank you. Uh, I'll second. All right. The discussion. Hearing none. Kylie? Commissioner Shuff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Okay. Stacy Wilson, yes. County Administrator. Uh, just give you an update on uh, our expense and revenue. They've got the books balanced for August. So the, make sure I'm in the right one, the expense report. Um, we are setting for the month at 1.3. Uh, total for the year 12.7 and for expenses or no for revenue sorry for revenue we are sitting at 2.4 for the month property tax got settled and then for the year 13.5 for the year how much for the year 13.5 um, through August that's through August projections are only sitting at 18 um, you know, sales tax so far is up at 70%. Um, so maybe at next budget commission, we talk to them about adjusting revenue. Some of these lines are overperformed where we've collected more and they haven't been adjusted yet. But um, I, I know they had a meeting today, so maybe they did adjust some at the meeting, but otherwise we need to get some of these. Yeah, there, some there of were these meetings adjusted. as I left. Um, I was there, <clears throat> had to leave. Okay. So with, with sales tax then? I mean, with uh, property tax and both rounds, we could semi-predict. Um, we should be able to predict sales tax the rest of the year. Good, pretty good idea. I agree. Yeah, we're trying to know. Okay. Yeah, we'll have that conversation at the next budget commission, I'm sure. Yeah, and I know they're they're going to start working on revenues. They were going to get emails sent out to the departments. Um, asking for their revenues for 2022. I asked them that last week or last month. So they're going to be starting that pretty soon. So then we can start ours. Um, what else did I have? Um, the Architectural Board of Review, our architect um, is going to them for the health department wall, uh, Mon or not Monday, Tuesday at 3.30. Um, and I think John's going to go with them. So hopefully we'll either have some suggestions back from the Architecture Board of Review or um, hopefully approved. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Jamie and I are going down to Columbus. We're getting our renewal for our health insurance. So hopefully we'll have some good news after tomorrow. But um, we'll, we'll be going down there for the meeting and then to get our renewal. Uh, courses is next week, next Friday, but they are allowing us to do virtual. So we're gonna we're gonna do a virtual here. Subco didn't didn't have that option. Um, yes. and the oh 9/11. We got a flyer from City of Tiffin. They're going to be doing the 20th anniversary. Uh, September 11th, they're having a fundraiser at Buffalo Wild Wings on Friday um, with a car show starting at 7 and there's uh, a, pa a Patriots uh, ceremony at 
at seven and Eric Sowers band. So which and, Friday? Uh, the tenth. Okay. And then on the eleventh of Saturday, they're having the ceremony start at the All Patriots Memorial at eight forty six. And then there's events throughout the day on Saturday. So I put it on the calendar and I think I emailed you a copy of the flyer. Um, Fastorias, I think. Um, they had they're gonna have a memorial service commencing on Saturday, September eleventh at ten AM at the Fastoria Fountain Cemetery. So don't know if you wanna split and go to each or um, but those are the only ones that we've been made aware of. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Aaron, thanks to you and the city for organizing that. That's going to be very nice. I don't know if you have anything you want to add, Mayor? Not necessarily, sir. Uh, it's all been a bunch of volunteers, uh, Joe Goshi, Chris Hayfley, and many others that have done a tremendous job with it. And we can't thank them enough for all their organization. So uh, just hoping we have a huge turnout uh, from the public. Uh, I, I know it really shocks me that it's been 20 years already, um, but we certainly need to live up to the, to the, the, to the tagline of never forget. So I uh, would love to have any of you commissioners, uh, if you were able to, or anyone from the public attend those events. You bet. Thank you. Thank what you. What was Valstorias, Stacey? Valstorias was a 10. Okay. Got it. Thank and I, Mayor can correct me, isn't the 846? That's the time the first. That's the first hit. Yeah, yes. so that would be Tiffins. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think that's all I had. Okay. Well, I'll start today. Um, yesterday, uh, the commissioner sat with a few folks from um, uh, from the uh, alternative energy company uh, situation with CC the CCAO regarding. Senate Bill 52. Uh, the only thing that I wanted to talk about as it relates to that is that um, we have a number of options, or three options actually, under Senate Bill 52. Um, and in order for us to pass a resolution, we have a, a draft of a resolution here that we haven't uh, finished up yet. But in order for us to pass that, we want to be one of the first counties to do it in uh, respect for Senator Reinecke's uh, authoring of the bill, that we need to, 30 days prior to the resolution, provide public notice of the date and time of the meeting. Uh, we need to publicly post a map showing the boundaries of the proposed restricted areas at all public libraries within the county. And we need to provide written notice of the meeting by first class mail to all school districts, municipal corporations, and boards of township trustees located in whole or in part within the boundaries of the proposed restricted area. So between now and next week, we will uh, put together these notifications, make certain everybody is aware of it, and on or about uh, the nearest meeting we have to October 11th, we will uh, pass a resolution uh, or will propose a resolution to be passed uh, in support of Senate Bill 52 and to uh, uh, transform the, the areas that are transformed by industrial turbines without local zoning approval. Uh, the proposal uh, is to uh, declare Seneca County as an exclusionary zone for industrial wind and solar development as defined under Ohio Senate Bill 52. So that is uh, what we need to do in preparation for the resolution that we pass as it relates to Senate Bill 52. Just for conversation, if we uh, <clears throat> did everything you said and posted uh, the notices um, at our meeting on the 7th, October 7th. That wouldn't be 30 days. That's my question. So. Uh, we have to do it the 14th. We could either have a special meeting on the 11th, yeah, there you go. which I believe is a Tuesday, Monday. A Monday. Monday, or we could wait until the 14th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, to have it in that meeting. Okay. My suggestion at this point, again, 
uh, if possible, you know, because it uh, because of support of Sunday Reinecke and support of the folks that have been in here, that maybe we can have a one item agenda meeting on the 11th. It is a holiday. That's Columbus Day. That's right. So we might as well wait till the 14th. Okay. So working backwards, we need to have. Uh, everything you described out. somewhere before September 14th we need to notify the folks listed uh, we need to publish it in the libraries um, and we need to uh, notify the newspapers okay. if we have to have a map ready then I'm going to need to know what areas are we considering excluding what yeah. areas are we that, I mean, the good news is is that we've got a map that carves okay. out the cities okay. the incorporated cities so that will basically be our map Okay. What we have that carves out the municipalities. Okay. And it'll be for wind and solar. Yeah. Okay. And for, for the public, we'll have more discussion on this. At the hearing. Uh, at the hearing. We'll be, yes. We'll explain it now. Under Senate Bill 52, we have three options. We can restrict the area. We can specifically allow either all or parts of Seneca County. Uh, for development of alternative energy or we could do nothing um, and in all three cases people have a right to put a referendum on the ballot I think within 30 days of an application which would require 8% the petition would require 8% of those voting in the last gubernatorial election uh, in order to get it on the ballot the next ballot to approve or it, the ballot could be either way there could be a petition to allow industrial turbine and solar development, or there could be a resolution to disallow it. Okay. So there's a some of the uh, notifications we need to make are copied here. If anybody has any interest, they can grab one on the way out. And it does allow for the commissioners to change that. Yes. If if need be, if there's a something we, that comes through. Uh, we can change uh, uh, based on geographic area as well. So just maybe a little section of the county, you can look at that. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty flexible, but it does give the commissioners um, much more authority and responsibility with these projects. I do have the bill in its entirety if anybody has any problems sleeping. <laughs> okay, uh, Commissioner Schiff. Thank you, President Kirshner. Um, had a busy week, as uh, Commissioner Kirshner said. We had the webinar yesterday with uh, CCAO for Senate Bill 52, getting details mm -hmm. and uh, protocol on that. Uh, also met with uh, Fire Chief Chris Daniel this week, going over some EMS issues and some things out there that they wanted to uh, discuss. Uh, on that topic, we do have an EMS meeting tonight at seven o'clock. So uh, attend if you have questions, thoughts, concerns, opinions, that sort of thing. So we've been meeting monthly on that. So that's the meeting tonight. Um, we also had a downtown development committee meeting this morning for Tiffin. We all attended there, discussed a good number of issues. And then uh, also we had the Seneca County sweep uh, this week in Attica. So we all attended there. Um, it's nice to get the help and the uh, people out to uh, Clean up out there and end up Bloomville next. So, have a busy week. The so. ambulance district meeting is NCOESC, and if you ever want to go to a short meeting, this would be the one. The Buckeyes kick off at 8, the meeting <laughs> starts at 7. We will be on our way home at a quarter of 8. So, you're not going to let Tony talk? <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to step wow. out. I'm holding you to that, Commissioner. Shots fired. I'm walking out there at a quarter too. <laughs> I am going to talk about you the whole time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then there won't be much to say. <laughs> Speaking of Commissioner Perini, so you're up. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, a few things. I see Shirley here. I uh, attended the uh, grade A uh, celebration out at the fairground Sunday. Uh, and basically we recognized all the youth in the whole county that obtained A on their fair projects. Sponsored by Fostoria and Tiff and Kiwanis. Really enjoyed it, had a good time, and uh, thank you for that. Um, I see Audrey back there, uh, it was nice. I popped in to the uh, CEO kickoff out at Ironwood. Um, that was the first event I had attended. Um, 
not being part of it, and I, I was really impressed. Um, talked to Jeff from Happy on the way out, and he said, you guys really have a lot of good things going in, in your county, and, and uh, yeah, I was really proud of the work they did, and the, and the youth, and the county, and the efforts we're making to um, retain the youth we have, attract youth to, to live in Seneca County. So uh, hats off to you and all the sponsors. It, it was pretty neat, yeah, so thanks. thanks. Um, we had Congressman Jordan in town, and I, I went out to the Sheriff's Office with him, and we met, um, taking a look at the facility out there, um, just talking about uh, things in D.C. And, and various dollars that are that are out there. He had a lot of good questions for us. Um, we had some questions for him, so I thought it was a productive meeting. Um, and uh, I'll yield back to you. Okay. Perfect. Uh, um, so, do we have any old business uh, stations? Yeah, right? actually, I do. I didn't put it on the agenda because I just got it back this morning. Yeah, um, I asked. We, uh, I think we vaguely talked about this, and it was property acquisition, so it was kind of an executive. But um, we've got the approval of the purchase agreement, uh, Riad's building out there beside. Um, the school of opportunity they're interested in moving that and obviously this county owns all the property around it so um, I worked with Derek and Amy and met with them um, come to an agreement basically uh, 190,000 for the property the building and they're gonna leave the racks and everything in there that way for the storage of you know, we talked about storage of our PPE because our public safety building is getting full, just storage of our documents since we're going to be uh, looking at moving forward with getting the old youth center tore down for the Opportunity Park project. So um, they took it to their board last night and they accepted the 190000 So uh, we just got it back. Um, I do want to just mention, because Amy found it during her uh, title search, and just make sure you're aware and um, you know I we met with Tom and kind of discussed it with Tom basically that when we sold the property we put it out for bid um, it was just the land they so we sold it for 2500 and it said if the, the deed says if um, we ever they ever no longer needed the property or didn't need the property which you know, I think they still need a property, but they're willing to sell it. But they said that it would go back to the county cost free. But at the time, it didn't have a building on it. It didn't have so. Um, you know, we wanted to make sure that everybody was aware. So, you know, in the in later, they didn't. Well, why did the why did the county pay for it if it was supposed to come back to the county for free? So. Yeah, um, we made, we we sat down with Tom, made him aware of it. Uh, we wanted to make certain that it was a matter of public knowledge that that's the language in the deed. Uh, but that is a matter of fairness. They put that money in it. Uh, uh, it, is, it is owned by the county and there is adjacent property as Stacy said that we can either add on to the building or uh, use it for future development. So uh, if, if we uh, didn't buy it, it pretty much would be landlocked or we could make it so. Uh, because we've got the easements and the right of ways to it. So uh, it does fit in the plan for the campus on the south side of town, and we have a, a, a huge need for uh, climate controlled storage. Uh, we've had that discussion here for at least seven or eight years. Uh, we uh, had a number of documents that were either ruined or nearly ruined in different places that we've had them. So we need to tear down the old uh, teen center. Yeah. Uh, that's where the documents are now. Uh, so that we don't have to continue <coughs> to supply that with heat and cool. Uh, it's it's uh, cost prohibitive. Uh, this building is made for storage uh, and it makes sense. So, uh, so it, I'll, I'll get the paperwork and stuff ready for next week. But I just wanted to, like, if you guys have any questions in between now and next week, probably get the paperwork ready. If you want more information or more documentation on it, I'll give you a copy of the purchase agreement they signed so you can review before we... I think, and they're, how long are they staying? It, they're going to do 90 days. 90, so okay. once we sign the contract, they'll have 90 days. 
And that's what they agreed to. They said they could they could yeah. get all of their stuff taken care John's of. John's excited. <laughs> yeah. I haven't told John Our, yet. I don't know if he's excited. <laughs> it means work for him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it kind of opens up. Having a place to put all our storage will now I know that was have a domino effect for all the things we want to do. It's kind of, it's kind of real. I know that was really important to Gene Ackleberry as well. The yeah. Storage and documents. Yeah. 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 All, everybody's uh, happy that uh, they'll have their own little section now. Yeah. And it'll help us get uh, the TB hospital, the old TB hospital um, emptied because that's not regulated very well. It's, 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 we don't Amazing. let the pipes freeze, but <laughs> right. it could be, it could be better. Um, mm -hmm. So it'll get all of our documents in one location you know looking for the future we could put an office out there for That's good news and have you know an actual well in theory as time goes on more and more documents will be scanned right um, and uh, hopefully that building will hold less and less as time goes on yeah so just wanted to bring that up i okay. wasn't sure if that was old or new business i think we've maybe vaguely talked about it. Old. Yeah. Old, yeah. old to us new to the public anyway. yeah I think that's all I had. Okay. Well, we're a little early, but I would like to hear from the uh, Visitors Bureau. Get an update. Perfect. Since we have smiling faces here. Sounds good. Let's see. Share my screen. Yeah, all right. It's very nice. Hard to screw this one up, right? <laughs> um, let's see. Now I got to... Why don't you introduce yourself? Yep. And, uh, so Bryce Riggs, I'm the executive director of the Seneca Regional Chamber of Commerce and Destination Seneca County. I'm Marissa Stevens, and I serve as stakeholder relations and the marketing manager for both the chamber and Destination Seneca County as well. And I'm Deborah Schwartz with the same organization. Perfect. So I'm excited to be here today. Uh, I've been in this role for a little over a year, and I've communicated throughout the year with the commissioners about some of the progress we're making. Uh, I know that a number of years ago I sat down with folks like. Uh, Commissioner Paradiso, Senator Bill Reinecke, and others talking about this role. And I, I've been, I was really excited to get into the role. I know that there's obviously a lot of things that we can work on to improve uh, both tourism in the county as well as supporting small businesses here locally. I want to give a quick update. Uh, as you know, uh, our organization for Destination Seneca County is fully funded by Bedtex of the County. As you can see, uh, Q1 what, wasn't too bad compared to last year. A little down, and then obviously last year Q2 was this, during the shutdown. So we have a lot of heads in beds, to say the least. Folks weren't traveling, and so we've had a significant uh, up, uptick in uh, folks staying in our hotels. Through our conversations we have with our hoteliers, is saying they're saying, "Hey, we're sold out." Uh, you know, most of our hotels are doing very well. Uh, things are getting back to what somewhat normal. So it's good to see that things are kind of on the mend, and that you know, folks are traveling and folks are working here in Seneca County. So I'm going to focus on refreshing the brand and really giving you the update on what Destination Seneca County has been able to do. So like Bryce mentioned, he's been in for about a year and prior to him coming into the role, a lot of people didn't even know that Seneca County had a visitors bureau or what it was called. Um, so really taking what Destination Seneca County is and making sure that people not only that are visiting but also that are within our community that they know who we are, what we do, and what we can provide. So some examples of how we did this. Um, for example, we're doing a redesign on, or we've done a redesign on billboards and marketing materials that go out. So these are both um, placed, as you can see, they highlight not only Tiffin, but also the county and Fostoria and everyone that's included that when you're coming here, there's something for everyone to do. And obviously mm -hmm. those are more external, trying to bring people in, trying to bring visitors into Seneca County, but also making sure that community members know that there's a lot going on in your own backyard. And, and as cliche as that might sound, so for example, this ad was placed in the Our Town um, publication by the Advertiser Tribune, so showing that you can plan your adventure right here in Seneca County, even if you already live here. So it's doing both internal and external stakeholders and, and making sure that everyone can take advantage of it. Another big thing we've tried to focus on with refreshing the brand is partnering with some of our, our hot destinations and making sure that they're getting benefit out of us coming there and wanting to promote them. So a big way we've done this is through stock photography. So we hire a professional photographer, we bring in some models, if you'd like to call them, um, and they come out for the evening. And it, the great thing about this stock photography is 
a lot of times when you've looked at past brochures or marketing materials that went out for the Visitors Bureau, it, there was no people in it. It was a picture of the Seneca Caverns, but it was just a rock, or it was a picture of the Ritz, and it was just a sign, which, yes, those are important to see, but people resonate when they can see themselves in a place, and they can see themselves doing the activity. So, um, as you'll see here, you see Seneca Caverns. Also, previously, it was Ironwood. Um, this was a partnership with Downtown Tiffin, so helping to cover both the, the cost. Um, as you can see, a very happy family here. Um, so what can I bring to Seneca County? I can bring my family and we can do something very similar. Yep, that's downtown Tiffin and this is also the Renaissance. Bryce is the, the favorite model in all these pictures, if <laughs> <that> you <laughs> can tell. <laughs> um, obviously another big piece is now that we've refreshed the brand and we're really trying to move forward is promoting Destination Seneca County. So this is our social media by the numbers. Obviously we know social media is not the only way that people get information, but it is a huge way and it's super helpful and really allows us to, to target people and make sure that the is getting now so this compares last year September 1 to August 31st to this year of September 1 to August 31st so you obviously can see is our Facebook reach is a huge increase our website visitors and one thing we really want to point out as well is this blogs creation so a 2133 percent increase um, so what we really focus on is being content creators not just content shares so we're taking events that we're getting that people are informing us about or we're working to put together the information we're creating our own blog posts and making sure that it's getting out in the most digestible way possible for people Marissa, are you guys paying for some advertising as well yep yep so i'll get to that too yeah so um blog posts as you can see is uh, well a lot of times we want to be the people that come to for their what's going on around the county so you can see we talked about the ritz or the fostoria farmers markets or the, um, even in Green Springs and so like I said really being those content creators and then with social media so some of it has been paid these are just an example of some social media posts but also some of it has been organic a lot of it has been organic as well um, with the algorithms with Facebook and Instagram and things like that sometimes you have to pay to get it to be seen and then also kind of going back to people that we've partnered with is the Seneca County Fair for example like we put together that graphic um, to be shared and trying to highlight different things that they're doing. So Seneca County Fair then could share it and use it as their own as well. We've also done contests in partnership with Downtown Tiffin, trying to get people, for example, this was for the summer stroll and making sure that we're going out to events and seeing them and doing them and making sure that Bryce and I and Deb are also seen to know that we are enjoying the county as much as we want people to come here as well. Um, one question we got a lot, especially I know I got um, what before I moved back is who on earth is visiting Seneca County and what are people doing there? And so we really want to highlight and kind of break down that stereotype that people are coming to Seneca County. It has a ton to offer, not only for the people that live here, but people are actively going out of their way. So we started started on social media, hashtag visitors of Seneca County. And really, as we go to different events, we're seeking out these different stories and being able to listen to people of what they're doing, what brought them here. Uh, so the top is a family met while on our Seneca Caverns tour. Uh, the wife had lived here before, moved away. This was their first time back and brought her husband and their young son. Um, he did way better on the tour than I did, but I only hit my head once, so we made it through. Um, the folks on the motorcycles were on their way up to their vacation home at the lake, and so they stopped in Seneca County and, and asked very bluntly, what is there to do around here? So we were able to talk to them and be a resource. And then the son and mom on the right is probably our favorite story. So this is Colin. He he's is at the Iron Triangle in Fostoria. He is 13 years old and he has been to over 40 states to see trains. They, he really loves them. Um, has over a million photographs of trains, but we got to sit there and talk to him in that they're from Chillicothe, but the Iron Triangle has always been on their list. And so they got to spend the whole day in Fostoria, um, learn, Ellen got to talk to them as well. And so really cool story to see that people were coming and that it is a destination for them to stop at. Other things that we're doing um, going along with promotion is making sure that we're really looking for those niche groups and taking what we already have and not trying to reinvent the wheel, but take advantage of it. So one thing that I know that Commissioner Shuff was involved in as well is the Seneca County Brewery Tour. So taking four breweries 
in Seneca County bringing people in and they're going around and they're enjoying the different breweries, but they're also getting to see Seneca County in a new light. And How so, was Commissioner Shelton Bowles specifically? <laughs> that is a uh, question. Quality, quality control. Quality, nice. yeah, quality that's a good one. Um, also, for example, we want to... Uh, be, be the the first for things we want to make sure that things are unique while they're here and so as you can see the Seneca County geo trail that is actually geocaching and it's the only trail that will be in Northwest Ohio so there's about 20 different caches that we're working with geocachers anonymous to get out and that will launch um, the, at the end of September at jams monthly market so we're excited about that it's cool. And then you have yeah. the Jeep a little bit. Yeah. So, oh, like I so said, good. finding these really niche groups um, that helps with Facebook targeting, and, and but also bringing them together is we also worked with Reams Farms for their Jeep maze, and they went to Jeep Fest, and so we were able to run ads and target people that liked a Jeep, or they are interested in breweries, or they love geocaching, and being able to reach out to them and really understand that Seneca County, if you like those things, is a place that you can come. And so we ran ads across different states, and specifically people like Jeeps, it's so funny to watch, is that we posted the thing about the Jeeps, and all of a sudden, all capital letters, I have a Jeep, replied, no way, me too, so. <laughs> we like to say, basically, invite all the people to the party, and they yeah. know what they all had in common, and so they're all commenting like, oh, I like to geocache, and then these are people from Illinois, from Kentucky, and these are all, all these different states, and they'll travel for this stuff. I say it's kind of, they're enthusiasts, to say the least, so it's how do you exploit the market, and make sure that they're aware that we have it here in Seneca County. And then again, another um, way that we're trying to, to promote and build those relationships is, for example, with this downtown Tiffin kiosk. So we were able to put that up. Um, and there will also be a geocache hidden somewhere around there as well once the trail's up. So that's cool to bring people to. And then as I mentioned before, Bryce and I trying to get out there at different events. Also Deb, Deb loved the fair and did the best in the heat, I think, out of all of us. Um, but we're trying to get out there and let people know that we are a resource. And so we were at the Seneca County Fair every day. We will also be at the Cross Country Carnival. Um, after attending some of those 9-11 events, we'll be at the carnival all day. We have assigned visitor info and a tent. That way people can come and ask questions, hopefully getting people into stores and restaurants. And, and there's over 400 teams that will come, so a lot of opportunity for tourism there. And then we will also have a table at the Fostoria Rail Festival. And so being able to offer visitor info for there as well. I think a big issue before is that people wanted to know, but there was no way for them to know. And so we want to change that as well. Um, also with promotion, one thing that we are working on is appealing to the masses in all ages. And so one thing we're putting together is a coloring book for Seneca County. So this is obviously the Ritz, and then on the right is the Barn Quilt in Faustoria, but it will have sites and scenes from across the county. And then in the back, we'll have a little bit of information in a blurb about each page that they colored. So being able to go... the author of that coloring book? Huh? Who is the author of the coloring book? I am I'm the author of the coloring book. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, Bryce keeps asking me when it's going to be done, and I said, well, if I had more time to sit on my couch and draw them, I would get it done faster. Yeah, but we want to make sure Pop Pop gets the first one. Yeah. So. Where are you going to put the numbers? Um, the numbers? Yeah, they know. Oh, yeah, the paint by numbers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll make a special <laughs> one just for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this way, obviously, it's getting people engaged. Obviously, we have our visitor's guides for adults, so this is getting people within Seneca County or visit. They can also learn it if they're younger, or even adults who, want, who enjoy coloring or just have it as a novelty to keep is that it's a way for them to learn about Seneca County and see the cool things that we're doing. That's really cool. So let's cover the next part. Uh, big thing when I came on board was relationships, right? There was, there was some fragments of relationships, and that was something we've worked extremely hard to build and work with a lot of our partners, as you can see. Ellen is here today. I think it's a sign that's a, a relationship we can help work and build, and I know she's going to talk a little bit, but the first thing as part of our contract was the Tourism Council. So to get adequate, um, to serve you know, the population the way we should, we need to get feedback. And that was one thing is that I didn't feel we did enough in the past. So it's allowing these folks to provide input of what we're working on. It's these consistent conversations and dialogue. And then also too, you know, from a financial standpoint, showing them our financials, allowing them to prove our financials and just showing that, hey, look, we're here for you. And so this group meets quarterly. Um, so far we've had three meetings. They've all gone really well, led by Michael Strong with the Ritz Theater and Denise Bell with Seneca Calvary. I think 
two of our uh, larger attractions in the county. And so that's gone really well. I know Commissioner Perdi so sits on that committee on behalf of the commissioners and he's attended all the meetings uh, and really been a good advocate for us as well. Uh, you know, obviously Marissa's up here, so the hiring of Marissa Stevens before. We have not uh, had a full-time employee in the office, so that was something I know I wanted to work on, something I talked to the commissioners when I was hired of having a face, having someone there that I can call, that folks can call when they need assistance. And so Marissa's been great for us. Uh, I say that, you know, it's hard to have, uh, I have a lot of energy, to say the least. Uh, she has more energy than I do. So. Um, We've been out there Sunday at 6 o'clock tearing down things or putting things up and I say, I'm sorry for making you do this work. And she says, I love this work. What are you talking about? Do you think I don't like this work? So for me, for her to get fired up by that, it makes me excited. And we got a wagon. Yeah, and we got a wagon. So um, <laughs> I'm pretty pumped about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was on our wish list, so I, I uh, checked it off. It's about time Bryce is on a wagon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, this is what we were using before, so the wagon is a huge step up. So Julie Atkins in the honors office uh, graciously let us use their, their, their wagon. Uh, I can tell you with the city's construction projects going on, that's it did not fare very well. Uh, we turned it back in one piece, but that's about it. Uh, and we have the visitor's guides on our hands. So that's one thing, again. It allows us to have that intentional conversation with our tourism folks. So we, we delivered uh, our guides to over 75 different partners and, and handed it to them. And that's something we've, in the past, either mailed them or we haven't had that, you know, that interaction before. So we made sure now folks, when they know, hey, we're running out, we get the phone call, hey, we're running out, get us some more. So that's been good for us to have those conversations. The Tiffany Halloween Parade was kind of an interesting uh, situation. Got a text message late at night, hey, Bryce, the the uh, Tiffin Development Center isn't moving forward with the Tiffin Halloween, Halloween Parade. What do we do? Okay, so naturally I reached out to our Tourism Council. We had conversations about it. We don't like to run events, but at the end of the day, we know it's a draw. Uh, people will come uh, from all over the place to our Halloween Parade. So our Tourism Council said, yep, naturally, um, you should do it. Unfortunately, I was in a staff meeting and said, they want us to run a freaking parade. And then they're like, we're doing it. Can I do that? You know, so uh, it kind of blew up to say the least. But now we're running the Halloween parade this year uh, in partnership with the uh, Tiffin Development Center. I'm going to turn that back over to them next year. But a lot of it's just keeping keeping things afloat and really uh, a niche for us. Uh, the town and gown relationship. So obviously being unique that I have a degree from both universities. I have worked for one of those universities. I feel it's important that we continue to have you know, role in that town and gown relationship. I know the TSEPs and downtown Tiffin's really been an advocate for that in the past. The chambers ran events like they're around the town. But what can we do differently? What can, how can we think outside the box? Uh, one of the ideas was the flag concept. It actually got brought up at a meeting. I went home that night, slept on it, and said, my God, it's going to be us. We're going to make it happen. And then Marissa had a design together that night. We ran by the universities, and they were ordered within probably 48 hours. Um, the flags are in the process of being taken down right now. Uh, just because we're going to put them up during like, homecoming, welcome back weekend, alumni weekend, those kind of things, welcome folks back. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of vandalism to our flags, uh, so we're currently working through on how, how we're going to remove some of the wood stumps from the, the we're poles. Think, we're thinking fire, so <laughs> yeah, everyone wish us luck. So be really on the lookout for that. <laughs> and then also the welcome back uh, signs. On, for the city, we have uh, kind of did a special banner that went up, and then Marissa attended the uh, Tiffany University Welcome Back weekend, and we also provided materials to the Heidelberg students because they just had different um, uh, rules that you know associated with external partners. So that's so what we're trying to do, build that relationship, with, work with Rob and Lil, and others to ensure that we're the best that we can be. A few more slides. As you know, we had our first bus tour in the county in a number of years. Uh, that's something you know I say. It's a slow process. You're not going to develop relationships, bring buses back in our community overnight. So that's something we were excited about. It was a very good experience. John from JKL Tours gave us a great review. He actually had to come back for a mystery tour two weeks later, three weeks later. But unfortunately, a lot of those folks were repeat customers. So we've rescheduled that. We're looking on a time later this fall, potentially. And then the other thing is we had folks in from the Airstream group out of Akron. So they called Deb. Hey, we, we like your materials. Deb does what Deb does. Hey, what are you coming to the county for? Can we help? Before we know it, we put together a three-day full itinerary where they went to Gilmore Ordinance, they went to Ralph's Joy Living, they went to Hawks Crystal, and they literally booked them for the Seneca County Museum. So we booked them full for literally a full three days. Uh, and we know personally, because we uh, were with them along the whole tour, one of us was, at least was, they spent a lot of money here. And so if you can make it easier for people to have a good experience, show them the behind the scenes aspects of uh, tourism in the county, it makes it a really cool experience for them. Where did, where did all the Airstream people stay? They stayed at uh, Leafy Oaks. 
That's where they stay. Yeah. Well, the leafy oaks are one oak The leafy oaks, right? Yeah. yeah leafy there was enough hookups and everything for all of them. Yeah, uh, barely, but yeah, there was enough. It was very full. But they so want to bring more back. So we want to double. One man asked if we could shut down our, our downtown so they could all stay there. Yeah, it was kind of cool. So we're actually working with them on coming back for next year. And we had, I think, 40 folks together this time. They're looking 80 to 100 next year, potentially. So Your rounds available? And that's what we're working on with them. Yeah. So that was one of the options we threw at them. They actually liked uh, uh, Hedges Boy Park as well as a potential option. So we're looking at what we can do, but we're kind There's of. not nearly enough hookups at the head. Yeah, it's no, yeah, exactly. So uh, we, we explained that. And then uh, the Foster Rail Preservation Society, and again, Ellen's here. So we just had a meeting with them last week. We go to their monthly meetings. Uh, it's after hours. I think it's important that we assist them in any way. For example, uh, I think Ellen's going to talk maybe later on about we've assisted them on a lot of different projects. And then I think one of the last things I have is the GAP program, the Grant Assistance Program. So when I got hired, I know Commissioner Kirchner talked about, hey, how can you support folks and you know doing a, an event, the Ace Grant Amphitheater, and a lot of you know, it, it, one you need to find the volunteers to run it, and then two, it's expensive. And so what we're trying to work with our, our tourism partners is we're providing funding. We have actually through uh, um, through approval from our uh, tourism council, we actually provide funds this year to help folks run events. So how do we get you know? There's a short application process online. They fill it out from there. It helps support their event, and that's something we're working on getting the word out. You give us one example, and I think this is a great program. Mm -hmm. Give us one example of uh, how this works. Yeah. So, for example, you know, a lot of times we spend money on I'm I'm assisting and running the downtown pizza party, right? So I'm allocating probably in, in the neighbor of two hundred and fifty dollars to five hundred bucks in marketing costs instead of them bearing that cost. They fill this application out, explain who their market is who they're uh, promoting to, and then we provide them that funding to market the event instead. And a lot of it's to gauge external partners, as well as internal partners, but an emphasis on external. So you know, that necessarily may not get heads and beds, uh, but it's an awareness thing. And I think you know, as we continue to grow as an organization and as a community, I think we'll get those events that I think will get more heads and beds, but at the end of the day, you gotta start somewhere. If you look at a lot of uh, communities around us, uh, really uh, event-wise, the number of events we actually host in our community um, is, is fairly small compared to what you know, like a Fremont does. It seems like they have events, uh, major events, almost um, every month they have something going on. So this might be an off-the-wall question, but I know that we get revenue from the hotels. Correct. Do we get any revenue for hookup fees for RVs? We do not. No. Okay. And there's different things we're looking at as options of. I mean, I think we do anything over three beds and over is what we collect from. But there's opportunities I think to get. Additional sources of funding over time. What about Airbnbs? Uh, again, three, three uh, over three, three beds and over generally. <clears throat> so. The OACVB though is like those are things that they're looking into and like lobbying efforts to look into hookups or Airbnbs or Verbos things like that. Gotcha. We're pretty connected. We went from a, I don't think being very engaged with the state organization. So Marissa and I just traveled down to Columbus about a month ago to attend the board meeting. So I think it's important that we have a say. Uh, then we understand, you know, what the current trends are. So, open up for uh, questions from the commissioners. Wow, nice presentation. Good yeah. job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Keep it up. What so, have you been looking for? We're hustling. That's the big thing. I think at the end of the day, knowing that, you know, we, we serve our, the, the, you know, our tourism partners and that our, you know, our funds come from the bed tax. It's important that we, we're smart about where we spend it, but we're spending it. And we, at the end of the day, by stockpiling it and keeping those funds in our bank account and not utilizing those to you know, bring more folks in the county, we're really doing a disservice to all our partners. So that's something we're trying to be better about and being trying to be creative and, and doing things that I don't think a lot of tourism folks are doing throughout the state. Nice job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. You're off the hook. <laughs> yeah. Okay, is it too early to have um, Amy? Is Amy here? Not yet. Okay, I guess it's too early. Yeah. I guess it's too early. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Please. Um, do I have to stand over there? No. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Can I sit right here? You're fine. Good. Good. My name is Ellen Gatrell. I am secretary treasurer of the Fostoria Rail Preservation Society, and um, we love this rural people right here. Believe me, they have done a lot. Whenever I call him, email him, he always has something in order to help us to get something accomplished. And I'm going to go back a little bit and just tell how we started because some people don't really understand. Um, 
Marty Frederick was the president of the chamber, no, she of the Seneca County Convention and Visitors Bureau. And she worked at the Best Western, which was how Dan expressed at the time. She goes, there's a lot of people coming to Fostoria watching trains. And at the time, there was no rail park, and they were standing on B&O property, the B&O Railroad at the depot, and the railroad didn't like that, and I totally understand why. It was very dangerous. And Melinda Rubel was working for the, for the chamber at the time. Visitors Bureau. Visitors Bureau, okay. And they were very good friends, so they worked together and got a committee together. And everybody figured out how to build a rail park. And I use this understanding because a football field has to have 10-yard lines. If you build a football field with 9-yard lines, nobody's going to come. <coughs> you have to build something that the people that are coming there want. But I don't know that there's a book that says a rail park has to have do, 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 and do. You have to understand what the property is like and develop it with that property. Fostoria is one of 16 iron triangles in the whole United States. We're one of the smallest. We're complex. And when it comes to computerization with the railroads, it's crazy. It absolutely is, because there's so much overlapping of everything, and people don't really comprehend all that. But so promoting it, we have a lot of people who are rail fans, and they call them foamers. Those are the ones at the highest level that they know everything. And I know this much of this much, and I mean it sincerely. They, are, they know everything. And then we have the families who bring their children all different ages to the park. The city wanted to build the park and we had to understand how they were going to use it. So, I, and this is an analogy that I've used. If your husband is a contractor and he's great at remodeling and building new and his wife is a great cook and he builds the kitchen the way he wants, not the way she wants, you're gonna have hot dogs and water because your wife is gonna say, you didn't listen to me. <laughs> I've said this for years, but it's a fact. You have to build something to the people that are going to use it. And these people understand that. They've been helping us an awful lot. Now, it isn't just them, because it started with Melinda and Carol Yeager. A lot of you know Carol Yeager. And she and Pam Smith here in Fostoria, they work together. And Jim Roberts. You all know Jim Roberts. I met him at the tracks, literally. Because he would sit there on his way home from work just after he had retired and he was working security over in Finley. And before going home, he would go down to the tracks and just sit and watch the trains because he loved them. And he'd sit in the shade and I only knew him from the side of his truck. <laughs> but that's, you know, and he, be he became our president eventually of our organization. And uh, love him dearly, <clears throat> you know. But he helped us also understand because, again, if you don't know what you're working on, you can't really understand how it works. If you don't cook, don't design my kitchen. So we had all these different people get involved, and John Detweiler was involved, for, we were involved with him for a while, and the kind of things just kind of quieted down, and then Bryce came up, and then it was just like everything started blooming again. And another good thing, Russ told me he has a lot more money than, than our Faustoria visitors you know. And that helps because Faustoria being three counties, we're kind of like a redheaded stepchild in some ways. You guys are all county seats, and we're the one in the corner, you know. And half of it is Seneca County, and it can be good and it can be bad, but with what Bryce is doing, everything is getting better. And I appreciate it because I live in Wood County. So see, in a sense, I'm over the line right now, but I don't care. It doesn't bother <laughs> me at all. You know, it's because the people who come to the to the rail park come from all over. And every couple of years we take a survey and I think Pete De Caesar has given you a list one time. We the last time we did it was twenty sixteen and we have somebody at the door of the rail festival and we ask their hometown and state. Now remember way back in twenty sixteen when there used to have lots of people, because last year doesn't count. Okay, 2020 is a year to forget. We had 18 states and 187 different hometowns and people from Canada and also Europe came to our one day event. Yes, and I'm gonna do it again this year, having an extra person, because we're having two doors this year, we're at the new high school, and I'm gonna ask hometowns. 
Now, I know we won't get Canada and we won't get anybody from any other countries because of the COVID. But it's still, I think it's going to prove what we have. And I know some people don't like trains. But the point is, if you have catnip in your yard and you don't like cats, then just sell the catnip to people who do like cats. <laughs> I analogize. You know what I'm getting at? My goodness, if you've got something going through and you don't have to pay for it, just let it go through and let the people come. You were talking about Colin. We had three young boys about the same age come. And that one was from Colorado. His mom gave him a birthday present of going all around for two weeks to different rail places. He was elated and he met two other boys. Now they'll probably never see each other again in person unless they come to Fostoria and plan it all out. But that's what this is. This is a place where people get together and they watch trains safely. Okay. So. so you told me how many trains, okay. this is my boggling to me. Yes. And well, so they come because the trains come. Yes, we are I-75 freight hour. traffic. I'll, you, I analogize a lot. We are I-75 freight traffic. Yeah. It's double track main line from VNO to Chicago. The, the, we call them the VNO, CNO, and the nickel plate lines, which really is Norfolk Southern, CSX, and CSX. But it's easier to give them those other distinctions. From the VNO line, which is the one that goes through here, that goes from Chicago, Buffalo. That is where CSX makes the most amount of money on all of their rail lines. They're going to keep those tracks up the best they can because when something happens they're losing money and that's what they want you know so they will do that now we, you notice we have transfer lines in Fostoria they're called Y's W-Y-E and that is how they go around the curve to go to another direction Fostoria has them in all different areas and the reason are different directions and the reason is they're heading to Toledo or Columbus or they're heading over to Buffalo or they're heading to Willard, or they're heading to Bellevue, depending on which track they're on. And that makes for a lot of interesting views, too. They're doing a lot of construction now on the tracks, you know, building up the ballast, the stone, and and they're doing a lot of this by machines now. It's not the old-fashioned way. Uh, and these people love to see that. Well, the other day, I saw a train go through on a Saturday and it went north. Well, just, I think it was yesterday, it went south again. So see, they're working in different places, and people love to see that. The 765, the steam engine, went through Monday. And it's headed to Akron, to the Cuyahoga Valley, and it's going to run there for two weekends. And instead of just heading back, they're going to go to Bellevue, and they're going to have first church in Bellevue. And if anybody wants to see the behemoth steam engines, go there. They, are, they have one at the Bellevue Museum that they are trying to get refurbished. You can't go to AutoZone to buy parts. <laughs> and, and it takes a phenomenal amount of money involved in all this. So they're going to have a big event there. 765 is going to be there. People pay them almost $200 to work eight hours and to get all dirty and stinky, covered in coal dust and whatever, to work on that train. And they just love it. They can't wait to do that. And they just have a lot of events like that. So that's what people don't understand. And I, I will use this too. My husband liked steam tractors and cockshut tractors, which were built in Canada and eventually went to Bellevue and John Deere's. So I went along with him and I didn't mind because I got to eat fair food <laughs> and go to flea markets. Hey, you got to find what you like and find something that you can add to it to make it enjoyable. So he thought I was nuts on all this. And I explained to him that it's just a different chapter of what people like. And if we all like the same thing, it'd be really crowded one place and life would be boring to other people. So that's why we have this rail park. There's so many diversifications of things that we like. And people come there and enjoy the trains safely. And they meet other people. That's what it's about. And again, I told you my husband thought it was nuts. And we had couples from come from New Hampshire. Two, two men that would fly in. He can't come this year. Mark from Great Britain would come in for two weeks. And he'd go to Fostoria and stay, and then he'd go to Bellevue for a day, or he'd go up to Toledo for a day at Vickers, and he'd go all over, but Fostoria was his main place. The New Hampshire guys came in. Couples came from West Virginia, 
Some came from Michigan, and they all went together there. Now, Wayne was too tired to drive, so he had to go where I wanted him to go, and we stopped and talked to these people, because I would see them all the time. He had a Honda Helix, one of those little red scooters, which is an old guy's scooter. Honda Trail 70? Well, he had a Triumph when we got married, but now he, he had a Honda Helix, you know, the putt putter, 70 mile a gallon. He'd be gone and I didn't know where he was. He was allowed to go where he wanted, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I mean, but when you have pickup trucks and you have motorcycle, you know, that, who knows where he was or whatever. He was down talking to those guys. <laughs> and I'd go there later and go, oh, Wayne was just here. So see, it's habit forming because people understand all these people come to the town and even if you don't understand the trains, ask them. They'll tell you about it or you'll learn something about it that makes it not quite as bad, okay? And also, I yell at people if they get on the tracks. <laughs> I do. I'm an Operation Lifesaver volunteer. I've been one since 06. I thought it would be necessary since Fostoria has so many trains, and I am mounted, if you can't tell that. <laughs> I, I've been this way since second grade. It was on my grade card, my teacher. Uh, yes, oh yes. But I have a mother and two grandmothers, so I think genetically it just kind of evolved. Okay? And I'm not the only one in my family like this either. So, good so, God, you should meet one family. <laughs> I will say, when we go off the tracks, she brings us back pretty quickly. So, yeah, that's but a nice it just, thing. People need to understand something. Because I know people hate trains. But if we didn't have trains, I don't think we would have a lot of things in our grocery stores, in our shops, and everything else. It, it all is relative to it. You know, it really is. They, the steel that goes up to the um, to Toledo, it comes through, and I, now I need to ask the guys again where it goes from, but it goes through Fostoria and it has the lipstick where they coat it. Then it goes back through Fostoria and it goes up to Toledo. Hmm. See, and people see that, and those huge, well, I guess I would call it real long pieces of steel. We're talking the heavy stuff. That goes through, too, and see, those go to steel plants. That's just one thing, but I mean, it's fascinating when you get involved and talk to these people. Very so, strange. it's a good place to go. It really is. And the bathrooms. That was the number one thing everybody wanted, and we had bathrooms. Mm -hmm. So. Nice. That's why I do this, you know, but the caboose, and I thank you guys for coming when we had ours. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to have to repaint the caboose. That's going to be our next project, and we're going to have people who know what they're doing. Dwight Jones is the B&O guru, and he has all the stencils. He's coming to our show, and I mm -hmm. might set, no, he can't sit near you. He has to have electric. Sorry about that. He's going to be in the other room. We'll stop by and see Yes, you will. Yes, your, you your will. Your group's done a phenomenal job with that park. I mean, it's just it's very impressive. Well, the city built it. But we knew that the city did not have enough people, personnel, to keep it going all the time. And remember, Foster lost 9,000 union jobs. So that really puts them in a big hole financially. So what should we do as FRPS? If we don't do something to help them, we shouldn't be an organization. And again, I may get out of the way, as long as it's legal, we're going to get something done. You know, so we do it. And I know a lot of guys don't like me, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm too old now, and I've never, and I never even cared when I was younger. I don't care. We can't like everybody. And, and again, not everybody likes the same thing. So the park made a huge difference in the city. It brought a lot of people in. And the tourism that Bryce and Rissa are helping us with. You learned a lot about trains now where the, the, you didn't even understand, right? Same. Yeah. Used to keep me up at night now. It still does, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> See, and me, I'm staying up at night trying to figure out, we have a new school building and I'm trying to put 10 pounds of poop in a five pound bag. <laughs> and move things around. Well, have you ever moved from one house to another and had to know where your kitchen cupboard was? You, I could tell, you know exactly where, the, where those Cheerios were before, but now they're not in the same place, are they? <laughs> so you've got to do all these things and that's what we're trying to do. You know, and again, last year didn't count. Well, thank you very much You're for welcome. being here. Any questions anyone have? Nice report. Yes. Okay, uh, Power Brothers, I believe uh, we're ready for your update. All right, Amy, you know, Palmer? Amy, yeah, oh, okay. got you. 
All right. So in May of 2022, both of your contracts are up for renewal, the electric facilities and the electric aggregation in the two townships. So I just wanted to come in front of you to kind of go through the process, remind you actually everything's been done that needs to be done ahead of time. So thank you again for all your help. Um, you guys are always by Star County. Um, so again, there's 30 renewals that we're doing on the facility side in the state. So we are going to set, send out, I think, five different RP bundles. And yours is in the first bundle. So we will be sending out an RFP, I believe, with eight other counties in that RFP. And this is, again, for your facilities. So I've already received a bill for each meter. I have the LOE. So we're ready to go on our end. And that's going to go out in this month. It's now September, this month. So it gets sent out. It is asked to come back on a specific day, usually two to three weeks after we send it out so that each supplier is responding on the same day with their pricing offers. And we give them, we ask for 12, 24, and 36 month pricing. Pricing comes back, and at that time, Melissa in our office will go through and put together, you know, separate everyone's out, look at Seneca separately, put the numbers down, and then I will come back in November to review the results with you. And the process is, you know, it's, it's very transparent. You'll see each supplier that responded and their pricing. We'll give, I'll give my recommendation from Palmer on which term you should do and why, and it will be apparent because of the pricing. And then we will have the prosecutor review the top two or three um, contracts, agreements, draft uh, red line agreements, make sure prosecutors comfortable with everything that's in there and then once that happens then I will come back on the day you will sign so you get refreshed pricing because in the electric gas markets the same way the pricing they give was only good that day but because of going through with the contracts and making sure they're appropriate and and everyone's good on them then we do the refresh so the, it will change slightly but but very little so currently, you are with Constellation. They will be one of the suppliers. We will send that out anywhere from eight to 10 different suppliers for the facilities. Any questions with that? Okay. On the aggregation, it's the very same process. I don't need bills because this is the residence of, of the communities that is going to go out in a different RFP that is strictly aggregations because that's like-minded um, loads and so forth. We are doing that, I believe, in the end of November. So in December, I will come back with those results. We will keep the communities in the loop so they'll know what's going on. But they ceded authority to the county as the county's aggregation, and you'll sign on their behalf but it's the same process I will come back with the pricing once we know who the supplier will be then about six weeks before the new contract starts the opt-out letters will go out to those communities and it's the same process it will say the same um, opt-out letter that they received in the past it just could be a different supplier it's currently Energy Harbor they will be in the mix as well, but obviously we don't know who will get it. There are fewer suppliers that do aggregation, so there could only be maybe six to eight that will participate in that RFP. Not every supplier wants to do aggregation. It's, it's a much more intense, involved process. So that's where we are with those, those both those, that's the time frame and as soon as even before I come back in front of you when we get it scheduled for the RFPs I will send 
the redlined agreements out so we can get that process started because sometimes that is what will um, take the longest going through the prosecutor's office depending on what's going on. Any Good. questions there? Refresh my memory. What are the two townships? It is Clinton? Big Springs and Clinton. Clinton. Big yes. Springs, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And and again, because there's a lot of REA in Seneca, most of the townships we could do it. And if they want to do it, I would by all means we would put it on the ballot for them. It's a ballot issue, it's an opt-out program. But but those two were the ones that I approached. This is, I think, our third contract. Yeah. Pretty sure. And um, majority of the township is the utility and not REAs. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's where we stand. But I'm always, I always, I don't care the percentage. It's, it's whatever they would like to do. And obviously, electric aggregation is more known than it was when we started this 2010. So. Mm -hmm. Um, initially so that's where we are with both of those so again you're in good shape I have one less item one more item I don't know if you have to do a resolution if you do you don't and you can't do it today that's fine but every because you're an aggregator for the for the electric aggregation the PUCO you know all about this the PUCO has to um, you need to recertify every two years it's just paperwork but there's specific times it's not due till February but because I'm here we'll get it Andrea will keep it in the office and then she will submit it at the right time it's changed a little bit the first page is just a signature for the president of the council or or yourself whoever there's two places for that and then the last one it has to be notarized so I need the original and again if you can't do it today you can mail it to me because we have time. I just wanted to kind of take care of everything. Okay. But it's the original um, governance plan, and it's it's nothing that Palmer added. It's just the PUCO document. Okay. Okay. We'll get them, uh, we'll get them time to look at it for yep. a week, and then we'll absolutely, look at it next week. that's fine. Yeah. We have time. And usually they let us know when those mailers go out because yes, our office. Absolutely. Our office usually gets calls quite a bit. And say, we'll keep the townships in the loop. Is this legit? Because it'll have our name on it yeah. since we are the, um, so I we usually get calls. So right. that she lets us know when that's going yeah, out, and then yeah, citizens yeah. sometimes call. So we, we can verify yeah. that, yep, yeah, that's a legitimate request. Yeah. And we do get quite a few calls. Yeah. Yes. yeah well, and, and well. always you send them our way. Right. That's what we're, that's what our job is. All right. Thank you, Amy. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Good, Amy. Okay. Uh, let's do new business and then we'll go on to the rest. Okay. One I got. Um, I got a letter from the uh, prosecutor's office. Uh, if you're okay, I'll get it ready next week. Um, they have a Ann Hart. She's going to be retiring after 33 years. Um, her last day will be October 29th. So they will have to have a vacation sick buyout. Um, let's see, eleven thousand five hundred. So they've hired somebody, so they're going to little have a little bit of an overlap. So the overlap will be twenty seven hundred. So the total they will be requesting for the buyout is fifteen thousand eight hundred sixty eight dollars. Uh, they did return to us from the FOJ account last year, 10,000, and they're expecting, or 13,000 last year, they're expecting to return at least 10. So they're at least gonna help the general fund cover this. It wasn't in their budget. It was, a you know, they didn't know until afterwards. So that would be, okay. and I can put that in for. And I'm fine with it, but are there any other unfunded liabilities out there that we might be, have any exposure as it relates to employees? Uh, the, the main thing would be buyouts, retirements. I mean, I guess if somebody quits, they get there. Yeah. I mean, I just wonder if we should consider no, accruing for yeah. Maybe uh, Jamie could come up with some type of a number Yeah. that could be out there as a liability. Because there's a, yeah, I think the, the auditor's office um, is working on it because one of the liabilities we don't have is the comp time because each individual department's right. kind of track that on their own. 
Um, the auditor's office was working getting with the departments getting those numbers so then we have a true and accurate amount. Sure, yeah. yeah. Well, so. one at a time. It was not going to hurt us, but if all of a sudden we have yeah. 10 people. Yeah, we had three one year, yeah. and it was a it was a good chunk. Um, there is a ORC that allows us to set up a fund uh, for retirement. We've talked about that quite a few times. Um, you know, yeah, kind of when we talked about the budget stabilization fund, we yeah. kind of talked about doing that one, but we did just the one. If there are any other unfunded, potentially unfunded liabilities out there, I mean, I'm, we've talked about a few things. Maybe we ought to kind of go over that with Jamie, yeah. HR or HR person. Yeah. To make certain that we've got that covered. Yep. Okay. All right. So, what else do I have? I have a supplemental appropriation request uh, from EMA. Um, as you remember, we cut a travel line, so she, he's asking for five hundred and to travel. Um, my next one is. Um, I have a supplemental appropriation from Juvenile Probate Court, uh, $932.43 out of their 1093 is their, soft, is their special projects fund, um, file pro subscription, pensions and associates. Um, there again, this is a new line that we didn't have last year and uh, uh, we do this year. so. I think that the next one is the same thing. It's a supplemental appropriation for $932.42 into the software license line, and that is their probate uh, juvenile computer fund, uh, 1147. Uh, next one I have is also from Juvenile Probate Court. This is their delinquent care and custody grant fund. Uh, they need 3500 in their other expense, new fiscal year for reclaim for payment of restitution through qualified offender work program. And I have a request from uh, Common Pleas. They had sent a letter um, asking to increase the amount of compensation for each jury commissioner. Uh, they want to go from 750 to 1500 per year. Uh, commencing immediately and this this came in um, at the end of the July but it, it didn't get put into the system until last week um, so they need an additional 580 in salaries $21 and 10 cents into Medicare uh, $203 and 70 cents into PRS uh, this is the request from the judges there's two um, you know Republican, Democrat, there's two, and you know they, they handle all the aspects of uh, the jury taking care of the people when they come in, and so this is that's their request. I don't know if any of the judges have talked to you about that or not, but uh, so their total is eight hundred and four dollars and eighty cents. So they want to do that right away, and then that'll be reflected. I think retroactively, actually. Well, yeah. And I, I don't know if he did it How far back? because the money wasn't in. Beginning of the year. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. this is this is that's an annual payment. Yeah. So fifteen hundred annual okay. payment. Okay. Got it. Um, I have a resolution authorizing a fund transfer to be made into the VOCA grant fund. That's a Victims of Crime Act fund uh, from for 15,000 uh, they have their fund comes up uh, October so they have to go from their 2158 to the 2110 so it's going from a VOCA to a VOCA but they have to split it every other year so they're transferring 15,000 uh, I have resolution authorizing Seneca County Job and Family Services to transfer Medicaid income maintenance funds to Fulton County Job and Family Services and authorizing Kathy Oliver, Director of Job and Family Services, to sign this and other related documentation. And is that the only ones I have? Yep, that's all I have. Okay. Your pleasure, gentlemen. Motion to accept the new business. Okay. okay. Second. All right, any additional discussion? Hearing none, Kylie. Commissioner Shuff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Uh, I have one thought before we go.
go to public comment. So when we go over the notices, we might want to run that by Gary. Make sure we do it right. Yes. Yes. All right. Stacy has a list of those things that we need Okay, to do. I just thought of that. Yes. Somebody so, said prosecutor review. Oh, when Amy was talking. Right. You yeah, we'll pick them off one by one. Yeah. And then because we, yeah, and the prosecutor, you know then, yeah, the prosecutor then will review our resolution to make right. sure he's comfortable with it. Yeah, and then, but also what we had to do the 30 days prior right. stuff. Right. That's it. Okay, we're good. Thanks. Audrey? The flood report. This <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Kirsch. I told you I don't know about that. I'm kind of sad. Uh, all right, just a couple things from TSUP today. So um, since last week, one big announcement we had was a new downtown business opening, so we're really excited about that. That's Rose & Co. going right in next to the Empire around there. Um, so any questions about that, talk to Amy or go see her. We're really excited. Um, also, we put out the announcement about Dream Big opening the Tiffin Community Development Initiative. That will be open starting tomorrow. So if anyone has questions about that, how it works, um, or anything about the process, what we're doing with that, um, have them reach out to me if there's anyone working on a project that you think uh, should be you know getting involved with that process please let them let me know to reach out to them or vice versa um, and TSEP is coming to do our quarterly update to you all in uh, two weeks uh, from now and David and I are going to talk more about the dream big process in a little more detail but send anyone my way in the meantime um, also, this past week, we announced uh, an opportunity for a business that's for sale on a new platform we have, the um, Tiff and Seneca Entrepreneurial Opportunities Clearinghouse. So whenever there's um, you know, an opportunity for an entrepreneur or an investor to get involved with a business opportunity that's out there, um, we're using this platform and you know, TSEP's office as you know, kind of the clearinghouse to connect those individuals, make sure we're you know, getting people that are the right partners, the right fit, um, serious inquiries connected to each other. Um, so the first one we did was with the Bird Scooters. We were able to land that local fleet manager through this system to get the Bird Scooters yeah. initiative up and going. Um, this is a local business that's for sale right now. They don't want uh, what business it is to be out there publicly. So what we're doing is taking all the inquiries of anyone who's interested in that business purchase or investing in it or you know purchasing uh, you know the business or property or what have you. Um, so we're taking that contact info, giving that to the individual, and then they're reaching out to people as they see fit um, on their business. So. We just posted that opportunity yesterday and have gotten a ton of inquiries already, so that's working really well. The business owner, um, I think, will be happy with the response that we're getting. Um, so if anybody's interested in purchasing that business that you know of or learning more about that, reach out to me and we will work that out. Um, and we do have several other opportunities kind of in the queue that are going to be coming up in the next couple of months that we're going to be using this same platform for. And we're happy to have Bryce uh, partnering with us on that, the business that's currently um, up for sale. He was able to help connect us with them. And he's also the chairman of our entrepreneurship committee. So uh, the chamber has been a great partner with us on that. Um, just a quick note, I will be on vacation next week, so you won't see my lovely face here. I'm sorry. I know you'll all be really sad. Uh, so one of my team will probably be here representing. Um, if you need anything during that week, um, you know, if you reach out to me, I'll probably send you to one of my team members. But if there's an emergency, obviously, feel free to reach out. Um, on broadband, so uh, we've been requesting feedback from all the different entities that participated in our kickoff meeting. So right now we want feedback on the draft of the proposal that we're sending out, uh, the draft of the RFP. Um, so if anyone has would like to discuss that with us, please reach out to either David or I as we're heading up that initiative. Um, and we're looking to uh, put that RFP out in the coming weeks. So let us know if there's any feedback on that process. Um, and then I'm going to take off my TSEP hat for a second and put on my Young Professionals hat. As Bryce mentioned, we really want to advocate for everyone to show up to Downtown Tiffin Pizza Party next week, which Bryce is chairing that event. That is a Young Professional signature event that we're putting on, um, and I serve on that board as well. So all the different um, vendors, how many are there? 14, it's the most we've ever had. Right, biggest pizza event in history, thanks to Bryce's hard work. So that is next, uh, not this coming week, the week after, Thursday 16th. the 16th. Um, five to six to nine. Six I to can't nine. eat any pizza either, so it's yep. kind of unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> so, on behalf of the the downtown uh, people and young professionals, we would really love to see a great turnout there. <laughs> so. um, all right, that's all I had today. Any questions for me on any of those items or anything else for the TSEP team today? No. All right. What's that? 
the formal name of uh, when a business approaches you, what did you call it? When it's for sale? Yes. So, um, you it's, have a name for that? Yeah, TSEOC, so the Tiffin Seneca Entrepreneurial Opportunities Clearinghouse. Okay. Yep, and Thanks. it is a specific... You asked me what it is. Yeah. That's a tongue twister. It is a tongue twister. We're sorry. I know TSEOC is notorious for having a ton of annoying ac acronyms. But yeah. have a <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, it's TSEOC.org. That'll take you directly to... Um, the place online where that's at, yeah, and you can also yeah, find it on our website. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. There's so many acronyms, you just, it's yeah. unbelievable. But, okay. Any other questions that's for TSEP today? No, thanks. All right, thanks, guys. Finally, you're talking about the farm. Probably the interesting part of the meeting. <laughs> the hey, thanks. Part. <laughs> Audrey's far more interesting than <laughs> I am. Deer. Look at it. Good yield deer. Jimmy, I, I'm digging this. Like, yeah, Stacy actually did this. Somebody yeah. this weekend called me a movie star because I did a training virtually and it was recorded it just felt like a million bucks <laughs> i was like "Ooh!" he asked for my autograph i go i i'm not there yet um nothing too crazy from the extension office tony thank you so much for coming out for grade a on saturday and thank anybody who donated their time um we did a lot of um oh um silent auction baskets mm -hmm. that kind of stuff so i appreciate anybody who donated to those uh it was a wonderful event it's really great to recognize all those individuals especially like since we've had covid you know we haven't been able to do a whole lot of in-person stuff so it's nice to get these kids those recognitions uh especially after the past year and so um nothing too crazy uh kind of winding up from grade a we're going into farm science review season last year we were unable to do an in-person farm science review so i'll be down there doing a lot of teaching a lot of volunteering that kind of work so uh, if anybody has interest in agriculture or, or um, farming, uh, come down to London, Ohio uh, from the 20th, sorry, 21st to the 23rd um, is our annual Farm Science Review, which is one of the largest um, agricultural education events in the country. Um, can, you, can you send me a link? Yeah, that? absolutely, you, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun time. You can find yeah, things like for all different, for birders, for gardeners, yeah. for... Uh, commercial ag producers. It's a uh, it's a really unique event if you've never been there before, and it's it's a good time to take your kids and anybody and everybody. A lot of new farmers are searching for equipment or you know getting new and, and uh, exciting information and education. Um, we had a wonderful farmers market this past Saturday, one of our highest redemption days with SNAP, which we've been doing some paid advertisements. So we're trying to get that uh, news out throughout the community and through neighboring areas as well that aren't familiar with the Tiffin Seneca Farmers Market, especially customers that are already accepting SNAP or already receiving SNAP benefits, letting them know that they can use those at the farmers market now. Um, also working on planning our Master Gardener Volunteer Training Class for 2022. Typically that's a really intensive winter series program that we do. Next year we're going to make that all year long. So if anybody has interest in gardening, you do not by any means have to be a master in anything. Master Gardeners is more so about sharing our education and interest in gardening altogether. A lot of people are Master Gardeners, they say we're, we're not masters. We, we're all failing together and learning from each other's failures. <laughs> so, um, aside from that, nothing too crazy. It will be a little while before you guys see me again with Farm Science Review and a lot of our team. This is our slower season before harvest that we have a lot of in-person meetings. So I'll be over in Eastern Ohio next week uh, at a training uh, and then Farm Science Review and a few other meetings coming up here over the next couple weeks. So if you guys need anything, you're welcome to reach out to Extension at any time. And uh, email, phone call, I'll get right back to you. Stay, I got Stacy our budget uh, this past week. I've been working on that for a while, so you guys will be seeing those numbers here shortly. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good thank you. Thank you. How about uh, some, anyone from Highbridge? Do you have anything you'd like to add today? There we go. Hi, good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning, Mike. Okay, good morning. This is uh, Ray Yankura. I'm uh, pinch hitting for Mike Ditto, who we usually hear from. Um, quick update from state government. Right now, the uh, state legislature is focused on redistricting uh, process, redrawing the state legislative and congressional uh, district lines. So that's where their attention is right now. But looking ahead, uh, three, three items to mention. One is the state capital budget which uh, Mike tells me you have information in front of you for that and a uh, timeline for uh, getting that organized and, and uh, on the same page is uh, the end of the month is what Mike tells me. Uh, second item is there is a new 
grant program that the uh, that the administration has introduced. It is focused on wastewater infrastructure. Hmm. So if wastewater infrastructure uh, sets off a, a light bulb for for everyone there, uh, we, we can talk about it further with uh, Mike. It, it is a uh, a grant program that's going to be administered by the uh, the Ohio EPA as well as the Department of Development. Um, so Mike can be of, of help with that. And the third um, item, uh, Stacy, Mike asked me to follow up with you on a uh, Justice Center grant call that you had. If you have anything that you need from him. Uh, to follow up or to help with that. Uh, he said he may have had that call recently and wanted me to put that on your radar screen to make sure uh, you knew he was available to, yep. to help with that if you needed. Uh, we had the meeting with her on uh, Monday. Uh, Charlene and I met with her and she gave us the guidance to get all of the CSEA, CSEF grants resubmitted um, for approval. So. I think Charlene got that done uh, Tuesday, Tuesday maybe. So thank you for reaching out to them for us. Well, a couple of things about what you mentioned. One, uh, water. we have a water quality lab at Heidelberg College in Tiffin. Uh, and I know that Senator Reineke and uh, Representative Click are both aware of that. So if there's any funding they might be able to apply for based on this new initiative, uh, please let us know that. Okay. And the second thing is, President Huffman uh, of Senate, we need him to know how strongly we want to retain Congress from Jim Jordan uh, when they redraw the congressional lines. So from this desk, uh, please do whatever it is we need to do. If we can write letters or have conversations, we sure don't want to lose our congressman. Sure. Sure. Their, their process, just so you know, their... their uh the way the constitutional deadlines, there there was a reform passed recently that, that is being implemented for the first time in this map making process. And that reform uh, spells out that the state legislative lines are drawn first, which is what they're working on right now. And the congressional lines start uh, when, when when those state legislative lines are done. So yeah, well, uh, let's uh, share that, uh, share that sentiment. I know the census, so Ohio's, Ohio's gonna lose one. Ohio goes from 16 congressional districts down to 15. Yeah. So that's that's the biggest thing that impacts the uh, the map making process this year for. We would like congressional district four to remain as it is. <laughs> sure. This uh, commissioner Parity, so I have another request. Uh, maybe you can report back next week. Um, I tried to uh, look it up, but I, I need a little bit of help. Uh, House Bill 155 has to do with uh, money for various land banks. Um, and could you give us an update on that? Sure. We uh, have a, we're, we're very, uh, we have a robust land bank here in the county. I'm sure this is the case across the many counties and we're limited based on the dollars we have as far as uh, removal of plighted properties that kind of thing and this uh, the request was for a hundred million dollars over the next two years to assist in acquiring properties hb 155. Okay. so uh, if you can help us out there that'd be great we'll do Yeah, if any of the programs that relate to housing, this has had the, by far the largest impact, especially uh, in the rural communities in Australia. Gotcha. We will check into it and report back next week. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Yes. Sir. One small thing. We had our meeting last week, and when Bryce and, Mar and Marissa were there, we were talking about the biggest train show east of Mississippi, which is in West Springfield, Massachusetts. It's in late January, and they're going to go along with us. It'll be wow. very enlightening because 25,000 people attend this show. It is, this is our fourth year going. Again, last year doesn't count, and you have to be invited. 
In January in Massachusetts, what a dream. <laughs> We're taking Ellen's truck, don't worry. I'm, I have an F-150 four-wheel drive and we needed it one year going by Buffalo. We're serious. <laughs> Two inches of that. Oh, yeah. oh, it was interesting. Good. It was in, but it's, you'll, you'll learn so much that. about people and that's what this is all about. These are people that want to know more about people in, in order to do your job and I, you'll, you'll, Pete went one year and he goes, I can't believe you know about Boss Story. Well, of course they do. We just want to tell more people about it. Good. And everything with Seneca County, too, because we only have 52 rooms at the hotel. So they have to go somewhere else sometimes. Thank you. Okay. Jimmy, make the announcement. Yep, if you're uh, with us online now, you can hit the unmute button and come forward for a public comment. Tommy, you're the only one we haven't heard from here. You might as well speak up. Well, I got a. Uh, uh oh. I enjoyed this meeting today with what I what I've heard from everybody here. Good. It was very good. Very good. And with your new screens up there, you know, you've came a long way with that. But Jimmy needs one more job to do. And that is <laughs> do, oh, I do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jimmy needs to kill these two lights some way in front of those screens. I'll have to go to school for my electrician. Uh, <laughs> no, it would be. I know it would help. It would help. Yeah, yeah. It's all one it's switch. Jimmy on two switches, on two switches but it's yeah. not. <laughs> that will look really good. <laughs> right. Experimental. Might have something we've, to do with it. Uh, just so everyone that knows, we've done it. Yeah, it looks no, worse. Made, yeah, they think that. Well, these are the two here that puts a yeah. glare on. You the okay, screen. Jimmy? If we do that, is this better no, like this? We've tested all of this before. Okay. It, 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 I mean, we're gonna have to reconfigure the room. Just don't like it. Don't like it. off. It might help if we get if we get commissioners with hair. It might help. I'm not gonna go. Taking the high road. Such a gentleman. Such a gentleman. I just want to remind you guys, and maybe if you see any of the electeds, um, the ARP to ask for the draw is, is by September 4th, and there are uh, quite a few townships that have not gotten the draw down. I know Julie's reached out to them, uh, Charlene's reached out to them, I think Audrey was going to reach out to them, but Clinton, Jackson, Liberty, Reed, Scipio, Seneca, Venice, and then Village of Bloomville and Village of New Regal. Can you give me those? Yeah, as yeah, yeah, the last the list so we can, you give we me will, a copy of that. We will certainly oh. mention it tonight. Yep. Yeah, we'll so, mention it tonight. Some of them may have done this because I got this earlier in the week, but. Uh, I mean, the main thing is, as we explained to them, they apply for it, but they, they decide they're not going to apply for it and tell people that, that it remains in the county. They do nothing and it goes someplace else. It goes back, yep. So they can at least write a letter and say we're not going to apply. Yeah, well, Stacy, can I? So yeah, we. I know Charlene is working on that, but our office is really, really encouraging them to try to take that money because um, David and I can see several solutions coming down the road for broadband um, and other economic development purposes, planning for the villages and those type of things that are potential activities that they could, you know, use these funds for for economic development related work that. Um, we would really, really encourage them to do that. So if you guys can mention that on, you know, on that behalf when you're speaking to them, we think it's they should not pass it up if there's any. Even if they don't have a project, they've got till 25. Uh, and the end of 24. Yeah. The end of 24. Right. And David and I are committed to making sure that you know we will help find economic development related, uh, you know, things that they can spend it on, and you know, by the time they need to make up their mind. So. Have you heard from any of them that just flat out said, hey, we don't want to go for it or we don't want it or is there any of that? I believe off of that list, two of them have applied since okay. uh, we got that list early in the week. So okay. we've gotten through to a couple of them. Um, we know that the concern about all the reporting and the admin and the extra work that goes into on the back end for them, they're a small staff of volunteers, like we get that. Um, but they can use, which, and I'm not an expert on this at all, I believe what I've heard is that they can use the funds to, you know, hire, you know, legal people and accounting people and people to help do the reporting on their behalf so yeah. that that burden would fall on them. So, um, and again, I'm absolutely not an expert on the, the logistics of that, but we would really encourage that they at least take it for the opportunity to work on some economic development. Just to repeat, they can actually hire an accounting firm to do what they need to do. You need to check and with that an expert money. on that. But I'm no, I know, I know it's true. Yeah. Yeah. You can hire an accounting firm to do what needs yeah. to be done, and you can pay for that accounting right. out of the proceeds right. on the rescue plan money. So, doing concerned about things on the back end really isn't a concern. Right. 
don't be discouraged by little paperwork. It's going to be covered. This is Charlene. I'm on the line. Um, I've reached out to all the townships as well. Clinton and Seneca both have said they've applied and they've been approved. Um, we're working on the other townships. And like Audrey said, everything that we've heard in regional planning is kind of the same. They're really concerned about that reporting and um, the financial piece of it, which we've explained to them, you know, for the, for the guidelines, they can hire a consultant to do that. And they understand it. They're just trying to figure it out. Um, my goal is to follow back up with everybody this afternoon again. So we're trying to push them as well. <clears throat> okay. They have until when? The 4th, September 4th. Saturday. Like, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, anything else? Jimmy? Not seeing any. Can't hear you nothing. 11.35, we are adjourned.